but this is your quick fix. This is not a good fix. Uh, you get quick, fast, and cheap, and we chose quick and fast and cheap. Welcome! Today we're going to talk all about fuel pumps and why I'm just not a born-again believer in, well, Walbro 255 fuel pumps. This is our pig. Look at it. Now the pig actually consists of a 69 VW Beetle with a C5 Corvette smash underneath it. And because I'm kind of a cheap piece of shit, I got rid of the Corvette motor itself and just threw in a nasty old 5.3 that I found on Facebook Marketplace. But that's where Walbro breaks my heart. I've been using these things for years and I have just not had a good relationship with these. And before we break down why we're replacing these things, it's not always because they break, although, well, they, they do, <laughs> foreshadowing, but it's because they just sound awful or they're too loud. So let's go ahead and take the back panel off this car and take a look at our current fuel setup. As you can see, I've already wrapped this fuel pump with sound deadening. And I crappily extended out the wires and rerouted the fuel lines so I can move this pump all over the back engine bay. So the myth is that if you put an inline fuel pump below the level of a tank, it'll have more pressure on it and therefore work less harder. That'll make it quieter. I'm calling that a myth because all of my decibel readings for the Walbro pump are basically the same. I couldn't tell sound level wise whether our pump is a foot above the tank or a foot below it. Now, that pump will die in short order if you keep it a foot above it and you're basically forcing it to pull fuel all the time. They don't like that. These are pusher pumps, so mount them lower or figure, don't do the mounting above thing, but for sound levels, I can't get it to get any quieter. But when the Walbro pump is running, it's averaging about 84 decibels, no matter its position. Now to quiet this thing down, I've even tried wrapping it with mass-loaded vinyl, which does work, but it also doesn't work. So, we gotta figure something else out. So whenever anyone mentions that a Walbro pump died or is just loud as goddamn hell, well, I recommend replacing it with the MSD-2225. Now, let me stop you right there. I think the 2225 part number is awkwardly close to Walbro 255, which is the amount of liters per hour that the Walbro pump actually puts out. Because they also have a 190 liter per hour pump. Words are hard, but that part number is deceptive. We'll get back to that. Well, it uses the same kind of electrical stud connections as the Walbro pump. This is actually kind of my pet peeve with all these electric fuel pumps. Got these tiny ass little connections on them and it's usually not the connection or where you actually put the wire in that fails. It's if they get a little bit of a vibration in there, the actual crappy Chinese metal of the connector will snap off. Now to jankily fix this, go ahead and use one size up connector on your wire and just fold over your wire and crimp it and heat shrink it. Or do something else. It also comes with some mounts that are kind of like a C-clamp, but they're U-shaped, but they're open on one side, but then are riveted on the other. They're, they're not bad. It features 3 8 in and out hose barbs. And I reset the decimal meter up in the same distance it was away from the wall, bro. And let's give it a run. Well, the MSD pump is clearly the winner because the Walbro was at 84-ish decibels and this one was at 67. And 67 is less than 84 if you... 67 is less than 84. Now let's talk about why it should be quieter and scumbag MSD for making a part number 2225 for their pump when a Walbro is 255. Some of those numbers are almost the same. Now, I think it's deceptive because a Walbro pump actually puts out 255 liters per hour, while the MSD pump, the 2225, puts out about 43 gallons per hour. The fact that this isn't an apples and oranges comparison should tell you right off the bat that they don't want them to be compared. The MSD pump appears to be rated at 45 gallons per hour at 60 PSI. But the Walbro 255, when we convert it to Bald Eagles and Freedom units, well, it comes out to about 67-ish gallons per hour. It's about a third more flow rate than the MSD pump. So being a third louder actually totally makes sense for these pumps. So for our crappy LS53 engines, this pump is more than adequate for just like a stock NA build or like a mild camshaft because 40 gallons per hour, that's 
roughly, roughly on regular gasoline, not E85, that's a whole nother ball game, is good for about 400 horsepower. Okay, there you go. Now, what do you think about all this? It's a lot to take in, you know, emotionally. I, well, I'm gonna take it in with a pile of white claws and some Doritos in my bathtub. <laughs> like you probably are right now. And since I've caught you in such a compromising spot, you wouldn't want those videos of us getting released. So you should probably, okay, do that now. Or, or don't, I guess that's fine. It's just, I don't want that stuff of yours to end up on the internet, would you? But coming up just around the bend, probably in like a week or a month, whenever I get to it, about an air ride controller we made in our basement for the VW Beetle. Because I was super annoyed to find an air ride controller that will just air it up to a certain pressure and then stop. And then when it goes below that pressure, it just airs it back up again. Doesn't really exist at less than a thousand dollars, which doesn't make any sense for like some crappy Arduino with a relay connected to it. And my coding, which if I can do it, it can't be that complicated. So stay tuned for that video because, well, it's already kind of working. So uh, we might as well make a video about it, right? Have a good one. Where's my socket? Where's my socket? <laughs> Ugh, just walking around this garage makes it sound like I'm an alcoholic. So I might as well share these beautiful knowledge tits with you, my friends. Why'd you move to the city? Uh, the ambiance.